All right, y'all, what's going on? Machiavelli Mills TV, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. So last night, the Los Angeles Lakers defeated the Memphis Grizzlies by a score of 122 to 121. Came down to the wire, excellent game, fun game all the way through, right? But there was an interaction between Mr. Shannon Sharp and uh, was Dylan Brooks, John Morant, T. Morant, uh, Steven Adams. It was crazy. Shannon looked like he's about to take on the whole damn squad by itself, turning into the Incredible Hulk, He-Man, all of that. Y'all know Shannon still be bitching 450 pounds. I watched the brother do it on Instagram, and he do it like it's nothing, giving out several reps, right? So he looked like he was ready for all that he could handle without question. You know, but the whole situation started because, you know, Shannon Sharp, he's a big LeBron James fan. He's sitting courtside. Dylan Brooks is guarding LeBron James. Shannon hollers out, he can't guard you. While they about to go into timeout, uh, Dylan Brooks allegedly tells Shannon Sharp, fuck you, right? Shannon Sharp says, fuck you back. And so Dylan Brooks starts talking some more stuff. Shannon say, come talk it right here. Come stand right here in front of me and talk like that. Come talk that noise right here in my face, Right? So that prompts Steven Adams to come over and try to address the situation. And then we see John Moran hollering, sit your ass down to, uh, to Shannon Sharp. Telling Shannon Sharp, sit your ass down. So Shannon Sharp starts saying something back to John Morant, which prompts T. Morant to come over there to try to defend his son, I guess, in some type of way. And then Shannon Sharp come over and start moving in on T. Like, what's happening? What's up with it, T? Then he telling T, I bet you won't. I bet you you won't. I bet you you won't with a whole lot of force. I'm like, oh, my God. Shit. Shannon was about to stomp T. Morant and John, and John Morant ears together in the same night, probably a minute apart from each other without question. And I'm looking like the crazy thing about it is this is what I don't get. The Memphis Grizzlies talk so much shit. They talk so much noise. They talk so much smack. They hate when somebody talks shit back to them. They hate when somebody shit talk something. When somebody talk crazy to them, they hate it. They ready to fight and all that. They talk crazy to everybody. Dylan Brooks got a crazy. He be talking crazy, talking reckless. John ja Morant always talking reckless. Ja think he, I'm telling y'all, Ja playing in Memphis got him thinking he one of the folks. He think he folks them, right? And if you don't know what folks is, shout out to the, that's GDs, the GDs down there, right? GDs, there's a lot of GDs in Memphis. They got him talking him. He think he one of the folks. He think he folks them. Brother, if you don't calm down, job be on social media talking about he got hollow points for, for dudes on social media talking like he got bullets for dudes. And when they asked him, Ja, you're a millionaire basketball player. Why you be on here thugging? On they was asking him that on they was asking him that on Twitter. To <coughs> excuse me, to which Ja Morant responds, been on that. Still on that. He said, still on that, been on that. Won't ever speak on it. And I'm like, Josh, speak on what, bro? You got bodies back at, Mor at Murray State that we don't know about? Because the shit is corny. From Ja act like he, like, Ja look in the mirror and think he King Von, right? And it's getting annoying. The whole team talk crazy. And the moment somebody talk crazy to them, they want to cry foul. Nah, bro. Nah. <clears throat> and again, I'm not mad at, you know, Shannon say something to say. If, you, if he antagonizes you and say you too small, you can say something back. Of course, cool. But you got to know, when you tell a man, fuck you, he going to say fuck you back if he got some heart about him. He's going to say that no matter his age or none of that. You know, and again, Shannon was really, Shannon doing what fans do. Fans going to holler, oh, he too small, he can't guard you. It's just that people know this Shannon Sharp and they know that he likes, he's, he's a huge fan, a uh, humongous fan of LeBron James. And they're going to feel a certain type of way because he's a talking head on TV. You know, he, and Shannon also been talking about how Memphis talk too much you know, in the past, recently, Shannon been saying they do a whole lot of talking. They talk a whole lot of noise, too much noise. And I guess Dylan Brooks already pissed off because he knows Shannon going to be riding for LeBron. And then Shannon was saying that the Grizzlies talk too much in recent, I guess, in, in recent uh, shows on Undisputed. So Dylan Brooks starts uh, start talking back to my fuck you. And I'm, bruh, as crazy as Memphis talk, job better be lucky ain't nobody put hands and feet on him yet. He talks so crazy. He talks like he's certified goon number one. And I promise y'all, Ja weigh all 160 pounds. Somebody slap the shit out of Ja and then knock his heart out of his chest because he that frail. And again, I, 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 and I'm, a, I'm a fan of his playing style and how he plays and, you know, his game. I'm a fan of all of that, right? But the brother just, he he do too much. He acting, he act like the Memphis Grizzlies are a gang and he the chief. 
he act like they a gang rather than an NBA team. I see a lot of young brothers is from the hood, like D Rose, Anthony Day, AD from Inglewood, right? People don't people want to talk 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 all that soft shit all they want to. AD from Inglewood in Chicago, Illinois, the Inglewood with an E in Chicago, not the I in California. Inglewood. Well, where D Rose now from, La Dirk, all you know, all the rapper dudes that y'all know. Uh, all the rapping dudes that y'all know and y'all grew up loving in the drill era, a lot of them from Inglewood and all of that. D Rose from Inglewood. You got um certain other dudes from all different type of hoods throughout throughout America, even outside of Chicago. They don't walk through the league carrying themselves like Ja. And I promise y'all that's gonna affect Ja Ja's marketability when it comes to being a he's not gonna be a face of the league with how he acts and how he talk and how he wanna talk tough all the time, like he the biggest gangster around. Like he got to cool out because you, you and your daddy was about to get your heads clacked together last night. I ain't going to lie to you. But I'm glad it didn't go to that level. And T. Morant and, T. Morant and Shannon hugged it out. And they let it all ride. And it's water under the bridge. But I'm telling y'all, they talk too crazy. They talk shit all the time. Talking like they big goons and all this and all that. And they headed by Ja. Because, again, Ja think he king. He see King Von when he look in the mirror. He think he one of the folks. Uh, I don't know. You know, and, and Dylan Brooks... He the number one. Dylan Brooks talks so crazy. Little light-skinned Al B. Sure looking at, I don't know, Christopher Williams' ass dude. Like, brother, if you don't, boy, Chris Broussard's nephew. I, I, all that crazy talk you be doing, calling Shannon a regular pedestrian and a blogger and all this and all of that. Like, Dylan, Dylan be talking like he a goon all in dude's face all the time. Like, bro, as much shit as y'all talk, just take it back and shit talking it is what it is. Now, again, he talks a mess back. But if you gonna if, if and he has a right to talk shit back if Shannon say you too small, but he gotta know the moment you tell a dude another grown man fuck you, a fuck you gonna come is gonna come back on the other end. That's just what it's gonna go, and then it's gonna be some um some vulgarities and some um um some expletives exchanged back and forth, and then after that it's gonna be some furniture moving possibly. Cause I promise y'all Shannon was about to transform. Brother was wearing a Carl Kanai <laughs> Carl Kanai type sweater. The, the cardigan was fire. I ain't going to even hold you. The, the cardigan Shannon had on was fire, for sure. That mug was clean. But the brother was about to, it looked like he about to dig choke slam two brothers in that mug, for real. And then everybody like, well, Stephen Adams run up, he ain't say nothing to Stephen. Because I don't think Shannon worried about Stephen Adams. Because Stephen ain't really want no smoke. Because at first he came out like he was just trying to see what the problem was. So I'm talking about Stephen Adams. And then when the security came up, in between Steven. Steven out there and one Steven want to get religion like he really trying to get to Shannon. One dude holding you back and you trying to act like then the other dude start holding us. Uh, after that, they, they all tried to hold Steven Adams back. And when a whole bunch of dudes trying to hold you back, when a dude tried to get bucked when people holding him back, that's how I know they don't really want no smoke. Because if he really did, he would have went right up on Shannon and said, what's up? What's happening? He went over there with an attitude and a disposition like he was just trying to calm the situation down and de-escalate it. And then when... Um, the security came and all that. Then Steven went out like he getting bucked and all that, right? And everybody like, well, Shannon don't want none of the big fellas. Listen, I'm, I didn't seen dudes in the hood be Steven Adams height and size and still get their damn block knocked off. Because that size and all of that, if you can't throw no hands, you being tall and big don't mean a goddamn thing. It don't mean shit. I didn't seen dudes my height. Talking about I'm five nine and a half, five ten on a good day when I'm wearing Timberlands. I didn't see dudes my height and smaller knock out dudes six foot four, six five, because they couldn't fight, they couldn't scrap for real, and that mug hit you with the, the wrong shit. Oh my god, it looked like Tank Davis knocking out uh, Leo Santa Cruz for real. So you know, again, it was it, it was entertaining for the game and all of that, but um, you know, the Lakers pulled out the victory, a much needed victory, might I add. The Grizz the Grizzlies were on an eleven game winning streak. And uh, the Lakers needed to, you know, make something happen and make something shake in the absence of Anthony Davis. But my thing is that Memphis talk all this noise all year long, talk like they certified goons, talk shit on everybody else, poking their chest out. Ja, the biggest gangster alive, he will he will whoop everybody ass. Let him tell it. But the moment somebody talk crazy, now they want to act like who he talking to me, bro. Yeah, y'all talk crazy all year long, and that's why I said at some point, Bron gonna have to like he got into it with Desmond Bain before. I eat like people in the league on. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a problem in the situation because how crazy they talk. Somebody gonna get a hold to Josh Dreads and twist them and throw them to the ground. Cause again, he think he from Memphis now, and you not from Memphis, you not one of the folks now, right? And again, I'm not trying to downplay. You know, um, Josh might be from a hood somewhere. I don't know. 
But I know he wasn't acting like that until recently. He wasn't acting like that at Murray State. He wasn't act like he wasn't acting like that when he first got in the league. Now that he got some clout and cachet behind his name, now he just all super tough and super bad. That's why I don't like this. I don't like this Grizzlies. I like when Zach Randolph when Zebo and them was there. Because they was the bullies on the block, but they ain't say too much. They weren't doing a whole lot of extra whooping and trying to just antagonize everybody. They only hit when they were when somebody hit them. Right? This team right here. They ask like to talk shit on everybody and, and poke out their chest and all this and all that. And let me just say this, too, because I was watching LeVar Arrington, a uh, former NFL player. I was watching LeVar Arrington, TJ Hushmanzada, and Plexico Burris. They have like some Burris. They have some type of radio show, right? And LeVar Arrington was like, Shannon was wrong. And Shannon ain't hood. He ain't hood. He from the South. Brothers got to knock that shit off. I'm a Chicago, Illinois resident born and raised to the bone gristle, right? With everything in me. I only went out of Chicago to live when I went to college, right? And it's, it's tough dudes everywhere. It's hoods everywhere in America. In America, The South got hoods for sure. And there's dudes in the country, in, in the backwoods down south, that'll whoop on a city dude's ass in a heartbeat, choke the shit out of one of these dudes. And I don't advocate for violence against other black men, but to act like a brother because he's from the South and he not... To act like it's not hoods in the South, that's ignorant. To act like just because a dude may not be from the hood, he ain't going to scrap or whatever. It's dudes from the suburbs I done seen whoop hood dudes ass because they thought because they was from the hood that was going to lead to some type of intimidation factor and actually help them fight good. And it didn't. And a dude from the suburbs got the welling on his ass and knocking him out, right? So I just feel like that's ignorant and ignorant in itself. And people are like, well, Shannon, old, he too old to be doing all of that, right? Now, granted, yeah, you can say he shouldn't have been uh, saying that you you can say he shouldn't have said that Dylan Brooks was too small, right? Some some might argue he only doing what a fan does, right? He doing how every fan acts or whatever. But regardless, Shannon said it regardless whether we think he shouldn't have said it or not, right? But and, and Dylan look, Dylan Brooks has every right to respond. But once you tell a man, once Dylan Brooks tell a man, fuck you, you got to know it's other stuff coming with that too. It's smoke coming behind that. And as a man, no matter what your profession is, you know, you, when you're not on the job, when you're away from your job setting, when you're out of your element, you're not talking crazy to your employer, you're not causing friction with your employees, and another man on the street outside of your workplace, when you're in your common clothes chilling and another, and another man tells you, fuck you, that man, no matter his age, no matter his position, no matter what his role is in society, no matter if he's a role model to other young men, he going to check that man and say, nah, man, fuck you. What's up? What's up with it? What's happening? Right? All of that, he too old, so it don't matter the age. I know my daddy's 67 years old right now. If a man tell him, fuck you, my daddy's saying, fuck you too. And he can be old. He's old. He's a grandfather, a father, right? He then took care of his kids, helped grandkids, so on and so forth, and, and, and helped to raise his tribe. And yeah, he didn't elevate it and grew as a man and all this and all of that. But once disrespect come from another man, my father going to follow that with disrespect back and it's going to be what it be. So all that Shannon too old and all that, nah, bruh. Another man tell you, fuck you, you're going to say fuck you back. And it might lead to whatever it leads to after that. Nah, Shannon shouldn't be that. Nah, Shannon, we don't want it to lead to no street violence and nothing like that. But hey, if a brother's got to tussle up and lock horns for a minute... They might have to lock horns for a minute, but we don't want to see it at the game. But I'm just glad they calmed the situation down in general. Machiavelli Mills TV, I'm out.